Hey guys, it's X and Shadow, and welcome back to Let's Play Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures. In the last part, we took care of the Future Footballs 2010, so does this mean that we're going back to the past for the rest? Yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, this is Dungeon of Dickholes, so I gotta wonder what A and D&D would be called in this game universe. Uh, assholes Dungeons and Dickholes? Heh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not the nerd. I probably wouldn't be able to wordsmith it quite as um, cleverly, although this game isn't exactly subtle with all of its humor, you know, those... Those birds are indeed dropping entire dog shit shaped uh, piles of crap. You know, like gigantic you'd find on the sidewalk that takes forever to get off of your shoes. Gigantic dog shit piles of crap. Also, for the record, people with dogs, clean that shit up, man. Nobody wants to see that or smell that or have to clean that up, you know? D seriously. Anyway, uh, back on topic, most of the level in Dungeons and Dickholes actually takes place in this sort of underground labyrinth sort of theme. You know, they had that little foresty area at the start, but for oh, fucking bad enemies. Damn it, damn it, hate these motherfuckers. <laughs> You'll be seeing a lot of those in upcoming levels. And yes, those bubbles are indeed deadly and will hurt you upon contact and are actually one of the most obnoxious obstacles in the game, so yeah. Also, I don't know where we picked up the ability to use telekinesis to pick up that key. I don't know, it's useful, I guess. So yeah, as the nerd said, they have us finding fucking keys now. It's a fucking platform game, not Legend of Zelda. So yes, uh, this is the general theme of the level. You know, you go through... Even though the area looks sort of uh, labyrinthian, and it's sort of set out like uh, set up like a big labyrinth, the level is pretty linear. You're basically going from area to area with some a, a little bit of backtracking, finding a key when you need it, need it, and putting it into the hole when you need it. <laughs> Holes. <laughs> <laughs> and also more invisible blocks because we all love those, right? Um, the invisible blocks will always follow a pattern in any level that you're in, so make sure to remember that it'll always go red, then yellow, then blue, then orange every single time. So if you're having trouble with an invisible block pat uh, puzzle, that's the order that it will always be in no matter what level you're in, no matter what. Also, this is, I think, some really, actually pretty damn good invisible block designing. Um, well, as good as invisible block level design can be, because, you know, I hate these motherfucking things. But this makes, like, the stuff in Mega Man seem really, really bad by comparison. Like, for example, here, you've got that first set of blocks that, you know, there's really very little consequence for messing up. you got to deal with two enemies, but those are relatively taken care of relatively easily. The second time, however, it's the same exact pattern, but now you've got Death Trap there. So, it's not like Mega Man where, you know, they'll throw a really easy one just so that you know, oh, we've got invisible blocks here. And then, you know, they've got a completely different pattern for when it actually gets difficult. No, they actually give you the same exact pattern, and it's not its not a matter of memorizing uh, a, new, a, a new set of blocks. It's a matter of you know, uh, doing the memorization that you already know better, you know, so I really do like that. However, it, you know how I talked about the level design not really uh, blindsiding you most of the time? There's one major exception in, in AVGN Adventures, and that's collapsing blocks. And now this depends on what level you're in. Sometimes the collapsing blocks are really, really visible, you know, they'll be like a different uh, color or they'll have a specific like design on them. But in some levels, like this one, it is almost impossible to tell what uh, blocks are going to be uh, collapsing and what blocks won't be collapsing. And uh, granted, there are only a handful of collapsing block sections in this game, so it's not really that big of a deal. And in case you haven't noticed, you get like 30 lives, so it's not like losing a life to a collapsing block puzzle is that big of a deal. But it's just odd because the rest of the game is designed so well in that you won't get blindsided, you know? It's just like, okay, everything Thing here, you know, I could have seen it coming, that was my fault, except for these collapsing block puzzles, it's just odd. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to do Future Fuckballs 2010 first and Dungeons and Dickholes second is because you actually need the guitar guy to unlock the second playable character, Mike Matei. Um, if you aren't familiar with the AVGN, Mike Matei is, I think, a friend of James Rolfe's in real life. I don't think he has had, like, a, a starring role in any of the videos as Mike Matei. I know that Mike Matei, the person, has played different characters, but I don't know if Mike Matei, the person, has been a character in and of himself. Uh, but he, he's, um, he's basically the Luigi of the group. You know, he runs about the same as the nerd, but he jumps really high, and he even has the same sort of, uh, animation as Luigi does. His attack, however, the lightsaber, is very situational. Uh, you really, um, there are a few, there are some instances 
where the lightsaber is in, uh, is useful, particularly when dealing with enemies that come towards you, like the bats. But for the most part, you're going to be sticking with the nerd, just because his um, his normal attack is the most versatile of the bunch. Uh, Mike Matei's special ability is to be able to see through certain blocks and destroy them. And to be honest, that's also very situational. You you're never really quite sure where you're going, where that ability will come into play. So I'm. Um, I show off the, the hidden areas that I know of at this point. I, uh, trust me, I haven't found all of them, though. This is not a 100% uh, run-through, guys. But, you know, it, it's an okay ability, I guess. Uh, Mike Mate is one of the... I'd say he's he's less useful than the guitar guy, but he's definitely more useful than the uh, guy we'll be getting in the next level, so... He sort of falls in that little mid-range, I guess, where you'll be, u you'll be using him enough because he can jump... His higher jump is uh, particularly useful in a few key locations, but other than that, in the occasional time where his lightsaber is actually the weapon of choice, you're probably not going to be using him an awful lot. Although I will say that if you do want to do like a mostly melee run, he can pretty much replace the nerd if you don't mind not having that sort of long range attack. Although trying to fight some of these enemies pure melee I think would be a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, in case you haven't noticed, although I don't know how you wouldn't have been able to notice by this point because we've been doing this kind of puzzle a whole bunch this entire level, uh, those little crystal ball looking things, you hit them with any sort of attack and you'll be able to, you know, um, open up some sort of uh, barrier, you know, it's like that, that rising Tetris block looking piece. Uh, this puzzle is actually relatively interesting because normally, you know, you you need to shoot the you shoot the thing as soon as you see it and then head to the door as fast as possible. But here instead, what you gotta do is you gotta walk far away from it, but not too far away, then hit it and then run through the door. I actually think that's pretty sweet. Although this, um, this invisible block section is a little bit annoying. I think just moving that yellow block to the left would have made it significantly, uh, significantly easier. Also, you know those flashing death blocks? You're gonna want to use uh, the guitar guy whenever you see those, because his, running fa his faster running speed makes those a hell of a lot easier than just using the nerd. Trust me on this. Just using the nerd with those flashing skull sections makes them the hardest parts of the entire game. Bats, however, are a pussy when you use Mike Mate, so that's pretty nice. Um, be careful there with that uh, flying uh, ball thing there. You do have to duck under that in order to avoid damage. It is a nice safe spot to, you know, gauge the... Get, gauge, gauge, whatever you want to call it. Gauge the timing of that spike ball up after it. But you um, do have to duck if you want that to be sort of a safe sweet spot, so keep that in mind. Um, just so you guys know, I am occasionally editing out, uh, deaths. You know, uh, sometimes I'm leaving them in just if it's only, like, one or two, just so that you can see the randomized nerd rant. Uh, but if I die, like, more than five or six times in one spot, or if I spend, like, more than a few, like, a minute on one particular obstacle, like, this obstacle coming right here, this, like, that death chamber up there, I died a whole bunch on, so I cut out, like, just two minutes of fuck-ups, because, well, it is entertaining seeing me die a couple of times. Nobody really wants to see that a whole bunch of me dying, so yeah. Uh, this is an interesting sort of, uh, chamber, though, because you- there are safe spots in this chamber, but the problem is is that the safe spots aren't, like, traditional safe spots. Uh, for the most part, you'll be safe as long as you jump to a certain rhythm against these fireballs, like, the ones in the middle there. If you- you- you're safe if you can keep on jumping over them and you can gauge it that way, but it's a sort of a multitasking sort of thing, where you need to be able to look at what's coming ahead while also keeping yourself you know, safe, jumping over that, uh, ball. It sounds like it's a little bit difficult, but it's not as bad as you might think it is. Um, however, the, the super scope that you get in the middle there is really more of a red herring than anything. You get the super scope when you pick it up, and it gives you a super-powered nerd blast shot. Uh, but if you change characters, or if you get hit once, it disappears. So don't really count on that, making the levels a whole lot easier, because you're not going to be able to take advantage of them too often, unless if you're super skilled. However, I am not super skilled. This is only my third playthrough. Um, but, you know, it, it, occasionally it can be relatively useful, you know. Every once in a while, you get a good spot for it. Uh, this uh, area, you know, you have to be able to get through this entire death chamber 
without uh, getting hit once, which is easier said than done, mind you, you know, it's just, uh, even when I do manage to pass it, like, this is the successful attempt right here, I can almost never get through this entire section without, you know, just resorting to bum-rushing and using invincibility frames, and that's another thing about the level design to this game that I do like, is that, you know, there are points where you can just say, fuck it, take the damage and plow through, but it does reward skilled play because, you know, you can get, if as long as you're careful enough and uh, skilled enough, you can get through without uh, making any, you, you can get through without taking any damage. It's just, you know, you have to be good enough in order to do that. Anyway, that's one of many cameos that are hidden in the game. Again, I don't find all of them because I've only played this game a handful of times. And this is not a 100% run, I'm only showing off the ones that I have found. Uh, but that cameo right there is for Mr. Destructoid. Uh, I don't know who- I think that's just supposed to be the, the mascot for Destructoid.com. And Jim Sterling, who I've uh, seen a few things of, but I don't follow his work particularly closely. Um, here, though, we have another one of these uh, Gradius-style shoot-em-up sections, and these are actually relatively... I, I say that as I die. A relatively simple and a good, you know, sort of breather section most of the time. You know, they're, as, they're a little bit more memorization-focused than the the normal levels are, although that's just a problem with, uh, I think, I a problem that I find with um, scrolling shooters more than anything. You know, a lot of the time it just seems like you have to memorize obstacle layouts rather than, you know, just react based on skill, you know. But, you know, it's a relatively uh, fun little section, and it, it does work for a change of pace. Anyway, this is the boss, which is just, you know, a dragon. There's no real special, like, um, uh, like gimmick to it. You know, it's just a dragon. However, if you want to uh, uh, maximize your life count, you might want to die on purpose, because there's, it's almost impossible to grab those two lives on the left there without dying first so you know you you get a whole an extra life like one total extra life if you die to get it so keep that in mind anyway as for the boss itself i find that it is really really easy as long as you use the guitar guy because the guitar guy's uh sound waves not only they don't just shoot through walls they also shoot through projectiles the nerd shots will uh be blocked by projectiles you know sometimes it'll cancel them out but with this uh, Dragon's Fire Breath, they'll usually just... Stuff like the Dragon's Fire Breath. It's not just this instance. But with stuff like the Dragon's Fire Breath, it'll just sort of be cancelled out by it. The Guitar Guy's um, uh, sound waves, however, don't have that issue. So that makes him a good choice for a lot of these bosses because it's a lot easier to just deal with beating them when you can just dodge and mash buttons. You know, the, your shots will just line up naturally anyway if you do that. So that's why I like to use the Guitar Guy for that boss. Anyway, next time we are going to be going to beat him and eat him. Oh yes, I don't know how I'm going to get that video up onto YouTube. Anyway, um, I'm X and Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.